Hello everyone and welcome to the Heathen Household. Today I'll be reading one of my favorite stories from the lore, The Theft of Elun's Apples. This particular tale is from the Prosetta and I'll be reading from Dr. Biok's translation. So come and sit with me as I recount the tale. Odin, Loki, and Honir were once traveling from home and crossed mountains and deserts where they found little food. When coming down into a valley, they saw a herd of oxen, and taking one, they began to cook it. When they thought the meat was ready, they broke open the cooking pit, but found the ox was not cooked. A while later, when for the second time they broke open the cooking pit, the meat was still raw. As they began asking each other what could be the cause, they heard a voice coming from above in an oak tree under which they were standing. The one who was sitting up in the tree said that he was causing the food to remain uncooked in the oven. Looking up, they saw an eagle sitting there, and it was not small. The eagle said, if you're willing to give me my fill of the ox, the pit will cook. They agreed to this. Then the eagle glided down from the tree and landed on the pit. The first thing it did was to eat the ox's two thighs and both of its shoulders. This angered Loki, who picked up a large stick and swinging with all of his might, struck the eagle. Recoiling from the blow, the eagle started to fly, but one end of the pole was stuck fast to the eagle's body with Loki hanging on to the other end. The eagle flew so low that Loki's feet were dragged on the ground, striking stones, gravel, and trees, and he thought his arms would be pulled from their sockets. He called out begging the eagle for mercy, but the bird answered that Loki would not be saved unless he swore an oath that he would find a way to lure Idun with her apples of youth out of Asgard. When Loki agreed, he was set free and returned to his companions. Nothing else is said to have occurred during that trip before they reached home. At the time agreed upon, Loki tricked Idun into leaving Asgard and going into the forest with him. He told her that he had found apples that she would find to be of great worth, and asked her to bring along her apples so that she might compare them. Just then, the giant Thiazzi arrived in the shape of an eagle, and seizing Idun, he flew off with her to his home in Thrymheim. Idun's disappearance badly affected the Aesir, and they soon began to grow old and gray. The Aesir had gathered together in an assembly and asked one another the news of Idun. They realized that she had last been seen leaving Asgard with Loki. Then Loki was seized and brought to the assembly where he was threatened with torture or death. When he grew frightened, he said he would go into Jotunheimr to find Idun if Freya would lend him her falcon cloak. When Loki got hold of the falcon cloak, he flew north into Jotunheimr. He arrived at Thiazzi's on a day when the giant had rode out to sea, so Idun was home alone. Loki changed her into the shape of a nut, and holding her in his claws, flew away as fast as he could. When Thiazzi returned home and found Idun missing, he put on his eagle shape and flew after Loki, the air booming with the sound of the eagle's flight. When the Aesir saw the falcon flying with the nut and the eagle in pursuit, they went outside to the walls of Asgard, carrying piles of wood and shavings. As the falcon flew in over the fortress, it dived down alongside the fortress wall, and at that moment the Aesir set fire to the wood shavings. But the eagle, having just missed the falcon, was unable to stop himself before his feathers cut fire, and he fell from the air. The Aesir, who were nearby, killed the giant Thiazzi inside the gate of Asgard, and this slaying is very famous. Now Skathi, daughter of the giant Thiazzi, put on her helmet and coat of mail, and taking all of her weapons of war, set out for Asgard to avenge her father. But the Aesir offered to reconcile and proposed compensation. First, she should choose a husband for herself among the Aesir, but she might choose only from the feet of the man, seeing nothing else. She saw that the feet of one man were especially beautiful, and said, I choose that one, few things on Baldur will be ugly. But that was Njord from Noatun. Another condition of her settlement was that the Aesir must do something she thought they could not do, make her laugh. Then Loki tied one end of a cord to the beard of a goat and tied the other end around his own testicles. The goat and Loki started pulling back and forth, each squealing loudly until finally Loki fell into Skadi's lap, and then she laughed. With this, the Aesir concluded their part of the settlement with her. It is said that Odin, to compensate her further, took Thiazzi's eyes and cast them up into the heavens, where he made from them two stars. Thank you guys so much for watching. From our heathen household to yours, I hope you have a wonderful day.